go a little bit. This video clip is about how to make this uh, ferro cement tank. This tank is one meter high and one meter wide and has a capacity of 785 liters. It took the villagers four days to make it. The cost of materials for this ferro cement tank at the time of construction was $38. Compare this to buying a stainless steel tank of the same capacity for $142. Now all the components that we talk about in this video are for making this particular tank, but here we're showing the formulas for making the rings and different uh, components so that uh, you can make the tank uh, any size that you want to. Only used uh, three bags of cement. Uh, this is good because uh, it's, uh, as I said, it's cheaper, it's easy, yeah. and it's easy to carry the materials to remote places. It can be used for collecting rainwater, spring water, can be used at the house, at the school, in, uh, for agriculture in the field. Now we're going to talk about how to construct the tank step by step. And before we do that, we want to talk about the materials and tools that are needed. The materials and tools that we need for the steel framework are pictured here. A couple of differences might be that you could buy a hacksaw instead of the rebar cutter, which would be cheaper if you're just building one tank. And then uh, the chicken wire. We've not always been able to find chicken wire on the local market, but we've been able to replace it with other, some other type of wire screen or wire mesh. Uh, plumbing supplies are pretty simple. In the tank, we'll need these things for sure. But out of tank supplies will depend on how many faucets uh, you want and how far it is from the tank. Um, the saw, you know, we just uh, have this saw pictured because it's one that the villagers had. But a uh, hacksaw uh, would be easier for cutting the uh, PVC pipe. As we watch the video, you will see how these different tools and materials are used. We've shown these graphic slides quickly, but you can pause the video for closer inspection. The first day's activity will be to cut rebar, make the rings, pour the footing, and place the uprights. These are the links that rebar needs to be cut for different components. Cut! One, two, three, four! All lengths of rebar cut for rings have an added 20 centimeters to overlap for tying. And then the important thing to put something to the tube, right? Yeah, we that's true. We did it. Okay. Now I need I need to say, cannot be high cement cow. So, so now let's the camera roll. For you. Is it enough? Can you put drum? A good general formula for mixing concrete is one part cement, two parts sand, and three parts gravel. So, since a bag of cement has six five-liter buckets of cement in it. So we can use this one bag plus 12 buckets of cement plus uh, 18 buckets of gravel. Oh, 
After this second ring is put on, then we're ready to just leave the project overnight so that the concrete can set up. Day two's activities will be to finish the rebar frame, attach the chicken wire, and start plastering. It's about 30 centimeters long. We fold it in half, and then uh, and then fold in half again. Like this. Then when we tie it, we start from the outside, push it in like this, and then keep it close and tight. Wrap this one this way, this one this way. That way you can get it very tight, and then use the uh, pliers to. When the rebar is uh, properly placed in the concrete with the ridges on the side, then when bending the angles toward the center, it's very easy. For the pieces that are too long, we can either fold them under like this, or we can cut them off with bolt cutter. Now we're installing the outflow pipe just about five centimeters off the bottom so that uh, any sediment would be lower than that, which we can wash out when we clean the tank once in a while. Uh, we're going to put a when we're concreting it, we'll put a rock underneath it and uh, give it more support when we mortar it in. The correct mortar mixture for plastering the water tank is one part cement, three parts fine sand, and adding as much water as needed. But for a good batch, you should multiply that by three and have three parts cement, nine parts fine sand, and then add as much water as you need. When mixing the mortar for plastering on, you'll just have to uh, experiment yourself. It can't be too wet, it won't stick, or it can't be too dry, you won't be able to, uh, to 
push it in and then the finished product will be between two and three centimeters thick when the tank is finished. If you have enough manpower some people can start making the brackets for the guttering. Uh, there's two ways of doing that. One is with a rebar bender like this. Another way is by using a post. Two brackets are attached to the eave for each piece of uh, tin roofing. And then the tin roofing, uh, each piece is split in half in order to uh, make sections of the guttering. The guttering then is uh, placed in the brackets along the uh, eave of the house. Day three's activities are going to be doing a little bit of plumbing, uh, plastering the tank the second time, and making the lid. Okay, usually we like to put a bucket here and pour the cement around it so there's a hole here. Uh, and then we can put screen in here that, so the water comes in here and this is our filter to keep the leaves and the trash out. But uh, today this tank is too high, a little bit too high, so we're making the uh, entry on the side. Uh, so there's two, two different ways to do it. I could never make a lid that fit perfectly, so I always need to mix up a little mortar and seal it when I put the lid in place. This seal is easy to break when it's necessary to enter the tank for cleaning. Sealing the lid and putting screen in the intake hole is important to keep trash out and mosquitoes out. Now we're installing the overflow pipe which is this two inch PVC pipe and the top of it is a meter high from the bottom. So when the water reaches this site, it will overflow into the pipe and out. It's a good idea to wash all your cement working tools at lunch break and when you quit for the day. Day four's activities are going to be to seal the tank and finish the plumbing. Now we're going to mix water and cement until it's uh, like a paste for sealing the water tank.
ก็ว่าตุปตอหลอดนั่นรู้ขอตุ๊กเล่ต่อนั่นหลอดโอ้ทาทองเต๋อหลอดทาทองทาก็มันทาลูกนอเดี๋ยวก็มันจีมูเลยเห็นด้วยเดี๋ยวที่นั่นเดี๋ยวก็มาลีจีตะกาละโตหันจีอุ้มได้ละโตยังก็เลยเอาทาลูกนอเดี๋ยวทักนอจอมทาตัวต่อ The proper way to put the tape on. We don't have the store-bought tape, so we're using uh, the uh, this plastic. And uh, so the proper way is to point this toward you, and then wrap it clockwise around like this. After construction is completely done, there's a waiting period of seven days. And during that seven days, we want to keep the direct sunlight off the tank. We want to keep it damp by splattering some water on it morning and evening so that the concrete can set up without cracking. After seven days, we need to wash the tank down by brushing the insides and then flushing that out. Then we're ready to let the tank be filled up and used. If the tank is ever uh, damaged in any way, a hole knocked in it or anything, it's very easy to repair. Just chip out any loose pieces of mortar and remortar it. Or if you ever want to add a pipe to it, it's very easy to just uh, chip out a hole, put the pipe in place, and mortar that in. We had fun making this tank at this village, and we've seen several ethnic groups using these tanks. So that they don't need to carry water at all during the rainy season. We hope this video has been useful to you and will be a blessing to you and those that you work with. God bless.